all things exist in the human imagination. And everything you see as an objective reality was produced by imagining. Think of one thing, just think of one thing that would simply deny it. You can't think of one thing. So you go to the moon, you first had to imagine it. Had to imagine everything concerning the machine that took you to the moon. Everything in the world first has to be imagined and then executed. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You must assume that you already are what you want to be and then live by faith in this assumption. Make your future dream a present fact by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So whatever it is that you would like to experience in your life, this, remember, your imagination is yours. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. The intelligence to do it will come, but you take the blueprint first and conceive it and dwell in it as though it were true. And no power on earth can stop it from becoming so. But tonight, if you're here for the first time and you want something practical, you apply what I've told you. First, have an objective. You must have an objective. You can't say, well, I don't know what I want. Well, all right. Come back the next time. Ask yourself, what would I like of life? Don't be ashamed to name it, what would I like of life? Well then, try to get some objective. Now, prayer, as far as I'm concerned, is nothing more than the subjective appropriation of the objective hope. And your wish must be realized. So live in the feeling of being the one you want to be and that you shall be. Every feeling makes a subconscious impression. And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, it must be expressed. Your feelings are different from your thoughts. Your feelings are what you experience in your body. The dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. Every feeling that you have makes a subconscious impression upon your body and upon your awareness. Well, now try it. Try to feel what it would be like if you held a baseball. Now, to prove that you have held it, see what it feels like, the difference now, a tennis ball. See any difference? Or like a golf ball. See any difference? A piece of silk. You feel any difference? If you can distinguish between these many objects, though they are subjective, then there must exist somewhere. If you can actually separate them in your mind's eye and distinguish between these objects, I can begin to feel, begin to sense, begin to smell a rose. Well, a rose doesn't smell or doesn't actually have the odor of another flower. I can detect the rose. Now a lily. An Easter lily. I can detect that. Well, what does it do? Well, I'm going to get them. Someone will think of Neville and send him a flower. And it's going to be the flower that I'm going to actually feel and touch and smell. It works that way. Money has an odor. It's unlike any odor in the world. It's more fragrant to the miser than the most marvelous perfume in the world. He can tell it. You put a money bag to his face, and it's like putting roses to mine. He loves it. He can smell money. He can feel it. Money has a distinct feel about it. Put a $20 bill in your hand and ask you to feel it, and then put another piece of paper in your hand, and you can tell the difference. There's a difference. It is an odor to it. All this is part of the inner man that all things are possible to him. And when I have an intention about what it is, including doing this program, 
when I have an intention about making this program a reality, and it involves a lot of money and a lot of, a lot of expense, a lot of people, a lot of things have to come together. It involves going over into my writing space every single day, never giving up on it. For, even if I don't feel like writing, four or five hours every single day, because I super glue, I super glue my intention into my imagination. And I don't allow anybody else's opinions to do anything to distract from that. I don't care if they tell me I can't do it or if it's impossible or it'll cost too much or we can't do it. My intentions are super glued there. And I have that do not disturb sign placed on my imagination and it is mine. Use this. Don't allow anybody else's opinions. Don't allow what it says on the internet. Don't allow the research. Don't allow what anybody out there tells you is possible or not possible for you.